The King and Die is the fifth episode of the fifth season of Full House. This is directed by Joel Swick. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. Usually with Full House, I will talk about each of the main narratives or the subplots in turn. But with this one, I'm actually going to go through things chronologically as I feel like that's the most logical way to go through things. And it starts off establishing that the Tanner family picnic is upcoming and they're getting their tasks and practicing eating pie with their faces. It's a fun way to start things off. And then Jesse comes in and says that if he can write one hit song, the record company will give him a record deal, which is obviously a huge deal, a huge thing for Jesse and really exciting. So he goes down to his studio, he tries to come up with a song, and he can't. And I feel like for anybody, I'm not a musician, but I am a writer, if anybody is an artist or creative of any kind, I'm sure you'll be very familiar with that pain of having to create on demand. Somehow it's always just so much more difficult when you have to do it. Michelle does give us a rendition of Five Little Speckled Frog, which is a song that I've loved since I was a child, so that's really good fun. But it's still not enough to help Jesse write his song. Although Joey did also come down and sing the song, and he mentioned Elvis, which will become uh, important a little bit later. It's picnic time. Everybody's wearing matching shirts, which I thought was a really great idea. Also, I just love that colour of blue. It seems to look good on everybody there, which is brilliant. And they're all getting ready to go. Kimmy's going as well. I've I've noticed, I don't know if I was aware of this before re-watching this, but I think Kimmy is now in every single episode. In previous seasons, she was in most episodes. In the beginning, it was just a couple. But now it seems like she's in every single episode. I, I can't remember going forward if that's the case or not. But it's great that they have a, a way to bring her into it more. And Kimmy is, as much as Danny wouldn't want to admit this, I think it's safe to say Kimmy is basically like family anyway. Unfortunately, Jesse doesn't want to go. And this was a difficult scene to watch. It was very well done, but it was difficult because he is so frustrated that he's kind of taking it out on other people. He ends up not necessarily shouting at Michelle, but kind of snapping at her. And this is partly because they're meant to be teammates. They're supposed to be competing together. And he does. He snaps at her and kind of storms off. And Michelle comments that Uncle Jesse is not nice anymore, which was so difficult to hear. And not not a great look for Jesse, but I don't I don't blame him. It's very frustrating to be in that kind of position. But it must have hurt for really Jesse to talk down to Michelle for once rather than talking to her on an equal level as, as he usually does. We then get everybody else except Jesse briefly in the car, and then Jesse, completely fed up, decides to go to the diner, basically to clear his head. And while he's there, he meets Elvis which takes us back to when Joey mentioned Elvis a little earlier on. Obviously, it's not actually Elvis. It's somebody who looks like Elvis. And he confides in him about his current situation and how he's struggling to write the song that will make him a success. And Elvis basically gave him this great lesson that I think we can all do well to remember, particularly if you're an artist chasing a dream. By chasing that dream and trying to be a success with his music, he hasn't been successful in that moment at being a good husband and uncle because he's abandoned his family for something that he thinks is more important. I do think that there's a, a bit of a grey area here because Jesse has a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity whereas he can spend family time basically any other day. So I don't necessarily think he should have gone to the picnic instead of writing the song that could change his life and Becky's life and their children's lives. But at the same time, it's nice to have that reminder that actually some things are more important. And if you are struggling to write it and you're not getting any work done, take that break. Go with your family. Clear your head. And I think that that's important to remember, that if you're stressing so much about something, you're not going to do the good work that's needed to be a success while also neglecting other aspects of your life. And I think it helps to put things into perspective. And if anybody is in Jesse's position or any kind of position where you're family and things that are meant to be more important are maybe being cast aside for something that may not even ever amount to anything or you're not doing as well with it as you perhaps would like to be. It's all about having a balancing act and I think Elvis really gave Jesse some great words and clearly it worked because Jesse then rides up to the car where they've broken down and it's not working properly and everybody's back together again. I would have liked to have seen a little bit of the picnic 
because we then just cut back to being in the house sometime later. I definitely would have liked to have seen a bit of that. But to be fair, we didn't have that much time left. And the final scene is Jesse playing his potential hit song with the Rippers and everybody's dancing and having a great time. And it's really, really delightful. I will say, however, I don't like the song. I don't necessarily dislike it. I just didn't listen to it and go, that's a hit song. Granted, I'm not that into music, by which I mean I almost never listen to music, unless it's Doris Day or Debbie Reynolds, a little bit of Frank Sinatra, not really that bothered. But I do love Forever. And I won't say too much about that at the moment, but he did sing Forever however many episodes ago at the wedding. And Becky joined in a little bit. And after I watched this episode, I went and watched that recording of Forever at the wedding and well I got very emotional let's put it that way it's so beautiful and that to me is an absolutely gorgeous song and honestly nothing Jesse ever plays will ever be as good as as that in my opinion at least it's a beautiful beautiful song nothing wrong with the song Jesse played here but definitely doesn't live up to the quality of Forever but that aside I think The King and I is a really great episode it definitely has some Really great moments, personal highlights. I guess DJ and Stephanie practicing their three-legged walking, which I didn't mention. Kimmy in general. The blue t-shirts, I just think they're so eye-catching. And obviously the messages that Elvis helps deliver to Jesse. So not a bad episode at all. The King and I, all things considered, is pretty brilliant. <laughs> 